Okay, so a very good afternoon to all healthcare professionals and welcome to GE Healthcare's Intelligently Efficient Week. Today would be the last of um, a series of lunchtime learning sessions for all of us, um, speakers and including all the attendees. And we hope that you have find all these sessions um, valuable to you. I'm Eileen from GE Healthcare, your ASEAN CTMR Marketing Leader. I will also be your host for the next hour. For those who have been tuning in for all the web series, um, even in 2020, or if the start of um, the Intelligently Efficient Week, or those, um, and to those who are tuning in as your first time, a very warm welcome to you, and really glad to see all of you again. Today we'll be discussing on technology and automation advancement in diagnostic imaging for challenging cardiac cases. So everything in the next hour would be focused on cardiac. We will be looking into how GE uses AI technology with deep learning in the world of the cardiac imaging space today. We're very happy to have our in-house clinical expert, Alberto from CT, which is no stranger to some, and Jessica from MR, who will be sharing more details on the topic that I mentioned. A feel free to post your question anytime throughout the presentation, and we'll take questions at the end of the presentation. I'd like to um, give a few background of the keynote speakers for today. So Alberto joined um, GE Healthcare ASEAN just last January, but he came from Italy and was also uh, in GE Healthcare Italy. He was a CT application leader um, back in Italy covering uh, after completing his degree from Ferrara University in imaging uh, radiology and radiation therapy, he worked as a radiographer in several hospitals for nine years before um, joining the GE Healthcare uh, team. So he's now here as a full-time employee uh, with us today, and he's um, here supporting our ASEAN customers. So over the last 15 years, Alberto has supported numerous doctors, um, key opinion leaders and generated many clinical evidence from sites um, such as our dear friends at Monzino in Milan. He covers the role of CT application and clinical leader for ASEAN today and will be sharing a lot of uh, good knowledge and information uh, with us. Second speaker we have today is Jessica. Jessica, um, as you have known um, in the space of um, Indonesia and Malaysia. Um, she's covering there as a clinical application specialist. Jessica started as a radiographer in National Heart Institute in Kuala Lumpur, Malaysia, better known as IJN. And she had nine years of clinical practice there. So Jessica graduated from the National University of uh, Malaysia, UKM, with a bachelor degree in diagnostic imaging and radio, uh, radiotherapy. Jessica also advanced her journey as an uh, MR application specialist based, and is currently based in Indonesia. So a lot of Indonesian friends who have joined us, I'm pretty sure you have seen Jessica before. Jessica is here to share with us her invaluable knowledge and uh, experience in the MRI uh, cardiac world with us today. So uh, without further ado, I'll hand over the time to our first speaker, Alberto. Alberto, over to you. Thank you, Eileen. I'm going to share my screen. Please let me know when you see my presentation. Yes. Okay. okay. Good afternoon to everybody and welcome to this webinar. My name is Alberto Mauro. I am a city clinical application specialist based in Singapore. Where do we come from? What we are? Where are we going? This painting is Paul Gauguin's artistic and spiritual testament. It is also considered the sum of his entire life path, from Parisian Impressionism to the Oceanic Islands. 
The following presentation will try to answer to these questions about the management of cardiac CT. Let's begin our journey. Coronary CT angiography is a challenge since we are studying an organ moving fast and sometimes irregularly. Coronary arteries are small and can present plaques and stents. Temporal and spatial resolution are key points to achieve the best image quality for the best diagnosis. We have also to consider the impact of radiation dose and contrast medium injection. 32 years ago, Godfrey Hansfield won with Alan MacLeod Cormack the Physiology or Medicine Nobel Prize for his part in developing the diagnostic technique of X-ray computed tomography. During his lecture in front of Swedish Commission, he shared as possible improvement for this technology, the study of the heart. This might have seemed like a dream since condition to freeze the heart were a mountain to climb. But again, this genius predicted what would happen years later. This is a 1998 G medical system document. It describes electron beam tomography as the fastest CT with an acquisition time from 50 to 100 milliseconds. EBCT allows calcium scoring, non-invasive coronary angiography, myocardial perfusion, and vascular function evaluation. Multi-slice CT from four to 16 slices at that time is considered a promising alternative. As you can see, it is heart rate independent and you don't need to use beta blockers. Radiation dose goes from 0.7 millisievert with prospective mode to 1.3 millisievert with retrospective mode. Sensitivity and specificity are promising. It seems to be the end of the story, since we have a technology able to achieve all goals. This is a paper published on the European Journal of Radiology in 2006. The authors did a pictorial review of electronic beam CT and multi-slide CT for cardiac imaging. Multi-slide CT is the cardiac non-invasive imaging choice for its submillimeter spatial resolution and retrospective data selection, while electronic beam CT has to be used only when temporal resolution is a crucial issue. EBCT is limited for cost efficacy and clinical versatility. Multi-slice CT will replace EBCT, but needs improvements in temporal res resolution and radiation exposure reduction, and this happened. Now, we can resume our journey. 33 years ago of leading innovation in city, a never ending story. At the beginning of the new millennium, first multi slide city system were introduced in the market, but spatial and temporal resolution were insufficient to ensure a good cardiac image. When the detector coverage was implemented to 10 and 20 millimeters with a submillimeter slice thickness 0.625 and a subsequent acquisition time 0.5 seconds, the cardiac CT angio became an exam that could be performed with patient cooperation, long apnea, and low and stable heart rate. This is a case done with a 16 slice CT. Using the detector configuration of 16 per 0.625, the coverage is 10 millimeters, and this means 28 seconds of acquisition. Heart rate is 67 beats per minute. The images are very nice because heart rate was stable, and the patient was able to maintain a long apnea. We enter now in the era of volume CT. 
Detector coverage moves from 20 to 40 millimeters rotation. Time is 0 0.3 sec 35 seconds. So we can acquire the entire cardiac volume in around 50 seconds and five bits. Higher trade patients can be studied with multi-sector helical scan modes. Spatial resolution is 0 0.35 millimeter to improve the cardiac vessel evaluation. As you can see, the word revolution begins to appear in our presentations. In this clinical case, you can see perfectly the full technical capabilities previously described. Heart rate is 45 BPM and acquisition time is 5.5 seconds. Image quality is very good. But radiation dose is still a concern, especially with helical mode, also if we use ACG main modulation. Snapshot pulse is a prospective gate in acquisition mode, which can provide a dose reduction compared to cardiac helical mode. X-rays are on in a prescribed cardiac phase only. The scenario is suggested if heart rate is stable, less than 65 BPM, and no functional studies are requested since data are not collected continuously across the cardiac cycle. Consistent dose reduction without image quality degradation is confirmed by literature. At a certain point, the major CT producers went in different directions with technology improvement. One of them developed a dual source system to decrease temporal resolution. Another came into the market with a wide detector, 160 millimeter scanner to increase the coverage. Another did a mix of coverage and temporal improvements. What did we do? Which direction did we follow? We choose to decrease radiation dose and improve spatial resolution. High definition at a low dose with discovery CT 750 HD. Gemstone 40 millimeter detector is built with gemstone material known for its high primary speed and low afterglow. For the most challenging cases, you can easily implement high definition mode to further improve spatial resolution to 18.2 LP centimeter in cardiac. GSI is our spectrum imaging application. It uses gemstone detector and ultra-fast KDP switching to acquire dual energy samples from a single source. Let's approach now how it's possible to decrease the high radiation dose of FVP images which is necessary for a fine diagnosis in cardiac CT. Model-based reconstruction accurately models the system optics and statistics. It provides improved image quality at significantly reduced dose. However, the computational complexity is high. Easier is a simplified model-based reconstruction in which only statistics are modeled. It retains the advantage of noise and dose reduction, but do not pay the penalty of computational complexity. 50% of dose reduction is achieved with Easier at the same image quality. High resolution and easier allow the optimal compromise between radiation dose and intrinsic spatial resolution. Stents and high calcified plaques blooming artifacts are consistently reused to better evaluate vessels human. Iterative recon algorithm brings to submillisievert radiation dose exposure. Coronary motion remains an obstacle to robust and high quality imaging for higher heart rates. By employing a novel reconstruction and processing technique, coronary motion can be significantly reduced, overcoming the inherent limitations of a hardware-only solution. 
Snapshot frees exploits information from adjacent cardiac phases within a single cycle to characterize vessel motion in order to determine the actual vessel position at the prescribed target phase and adaptively compensate for any residual motion at the phase effectively compressing the reconstruction temporal window. The benefits of snapshot frees are evident and compromised acquisition for high and unstable art rates can now be recovered. Adaptive imaging for arrhythmia management avoids unanticipated premature beats in prospective acquisition mode and improves overall scan reliability. ECG editor provides edit capabilities on the ECG waveform display for cardiac helical and cine modes. User can make changes to ECG, potentially improving gating response in cases with arrhythmia or irregular triggers. Snapshot Assist is a feature helping health user with acquisition mode selection and parameter settings. After recording the ECG trace, the system will suggest scan mode, prospective or retrospective, KV and the MA, according to the scout-based technique. This is the first automatic tool in cardiac CTA workflow. In this paper, I explore the progress and the potential of cardiac CT technologies with a robust link to literature. But for very challenging cases, evolution is not enough since artifacts continue to compromise image quality. Now we need a revolution. Revolution CT is a breakthrough that delivers uncompromised image quality and clinical capabilities through the convergence of coverage, spatial resolution, temporal resolution, CT spectral imaging, and those performance. 160 millimeter detector coverage, 0 0.28 second rotation time, 18.2 LP centimeter cardiac resolution, always one bit axial gated acquisition, AZRV, new generation iterative recon algorithm, are specs leading to meet all clinical needs. Since Revolution CT is a platform, a lot of developments have been done to make cardiac CT more robust. SmartFace is an intelligent reconstruction feature which automatically locate and reconstruct the phase or phases of least motion within the acquired scan data. Smart arrhythmia is the real-time reaction to heartbeat irregularities. The system will abort and rescan whenever an early beat is detected during the acquisition, or if the system has failed to acquire the, prescription, the prescribed phases. Whole bit acquisition allows an entire full heart cycle reconstruction. Snapshot freeze two is the evolution of the intracycle motion correction algorithm previously described extending the improvements from vessel per vessel to whole heart with benefits for valve, chambers, and myocardium. On Revolution CT, autogating is a comprehensive toolkit to make cardiac imaging reliable and reproducible. It is no longer a question of which scan mode, but rather and more simply, a decision of when to image within the cardiac cycle with a flexible wide cone cardiac axial acquisition. 
Note that the aspects of snapshot assays that deal with patient sites are now contained within the KV assist feature on the revolution system. What we should image within the cardiac cycle, particularly for coronary assessment, is based on fundamental physiology and determined by the patient heart rate. For low to moderate heart rates, a mid-diastolic acquisition window is appropriate. For very high heart rates, an end systolic window is common. With intermediate heart rates, it is typically advantageous to acquire in both end systole and mid-diastole to min maximize image quality. This table summarizes the SFARTA, including where snapshot freeze motion correction may be helpful. This art rate dependent logic is encapsulated in photo gating profile, which governs how the feature will operate for a particular use case. In the example, a 77 BPM heart rate is anticipated for a coronary CTA exam. The system utilizes an acquisition with both end systole and mid diastole phase ranges. No limits in cardiac acquisition. Autogating workflow always enables the best acquisition scenario to always achieve the best result. Low radiation dose, low amount of contrast medium, complex exams like TAVI and myocardial dynamic perfusion are now routine. Pediatric CT is a challenge, but adaptive wide axial coverage, one bit acquisition, and 70 kV lead to an uncompromised image quality, even with no sedation. Our customers are the best testimonials to confirm the robustness of this system. G through Fidelity Deep Learning Image Reconstruction is a game-changing technology to open a new era of CT image reconstruction. For decades, radiologists has to make the trade-off between spatial resolution, low contrast detectability, image texture, radiation dose, and reconstruction speed. Due to technology limitations of filter back projection and iterative reconstruction. Utilizing GE Design Deep Learning Image Recon Engine, GE through Fidelity Deep Learning Image Reconstruction can generate CT images with outstanding spatial resolution, low contrast detectability, and a natural looking image texture all at the same time. All of these are achievable while maintaining a low radiation dose and without impacting the normal throughput of routine CT. GE through Fidelity Deep Learning Image Reconstruction has the potential to improve radiologists' confidence in diagnosing a wide range of clinical cases from conventional to spectral acquisitions. With Revolution City, we solved one of the biggest challenges of city technology with a platform that provided uncompromised access to all core imaging attributes. It was the first time you could have a system that didn't force you to choose between temporal resolution, spectral imaging, spatial resolution, and coverage. Revolution Apex builds off this uncompromised image approach with the Quantic 160 cube and deep learning image reconstruction which together supercharge all CT, all key CT imaging attributes to deliver great image quality. Quantix 160 liquid bearing tube includes a new flat emitter cathode design and a wide view anode that can together achieve 1,300 MA within 60 centimeters of coverage. the best image quality across all acquisitions. True fidelity changes image perception, no noise, but only resolution with loss with, 
without loss of the tail. Low KAV is possible also for medium-sized patients due to high MA output to achieve the optimal contrast to noise ratio. This video shows the entire cardiac acquisition workflow and it represents a powerful take home message. So I think um, the video ha doesn't have a sound. I, I think that we missed the sound. Anyway, uh, the images were uh, again uh, impacting also without the sound. What we what we can uh, what can we expect from future? These are two recent papers. Photon counting is the holy grail of CT. There will be terrific improvements in spatial resolution and electronic noise removal, which are fundamental in cardiovascular imaging. All the major vendors are working on this technology development. The impact of these images is amazing. Leonardo da Vinci's drawing of male figure perfectly inscribed in a circle and square known as the Vitruvian Man illustrates what he believed to be a divine connection between the human form and the universe. Perfection is perhaps impossible to achieve but nothing will stop the progress. Our journey ends here today. City development in cardiac will continue. Thank you very much. And now a pleasure in handing you over to Jessica. Hi, Jessica, you might need to unmute yourself. Okay. Great. We can hear you. We can see. Go ahead. Okay. 
Hi, a warm greeting to everyone. Thank you for spending your time with us. I'm Jessica Yin. So I'm now sharing the presentations about technology and automation advancement in diagnostic imaging for challenging MR cardiac cases. So we introduced the power of deep learning and recon DL integrated with the Society for Cardiovascular Magnetic Resonance recommended protocol in your day-to-day -day practice to standardize and to simplify the general protocol approach that generally consists of functions and morphology, the flow quantitative blood flow phase contrast uh, sequence, and myocardial tissue characterizations by using the black blood fasting echo. And sometimes we also need to perform the stress and rest perfusions to assess in any ischemic heart defect and followed by myocardial delay enhancement. So beyond the routine practice, there are actually the great uh, capability that can help us to find out more about the indications and the criteria for diagnosing various cardiovascular disease. CMR parametric mapping, we have the T1 native cardio mapping, T2 cardio mapping, extracellular volume, and T2 star cardio mapping to help us and allowing us nowadays to analyze the quantitative change in the myocardium. And these changes usually uh, include the specific disease that are mainly related to the intracellular disturbance, such as in the non ischemic cardiomyopathy. And it's a fantastic tool to monitor the, your, your patient's journey for the cardiomyopathy patients for the follow up case, for the follow up study, and uh, their progress. Meanwhile, for 4D VIOS work, it helps us to acquire the whole heart volume in a free breathing way, and thus we can assess and quantify the normal and very complex hemodynamic in just a one acquisitions with free breathing technique. Meanwhile, for the 3D VIOS work, we can now capture the entire ventricular volume, uh, to, especially to overcome your challenge for the difficult patients to comply the multiple breath hole. So this sequence 3D VIOS work, we can acquire with a single breath hole or free breathing. So our air technology is the, our solutions to help you to solve the problems, the challenges from the planning to the diagnosis. Air Recon DL is a bionic deep learning based reconstruction algorithm that further improving the signal to noise ratio and improve the resolution's image sharpness and thus enabling the shorter scan time too. So how it works? It enables uh, us to acquiring the, at the foundation's level by utilizing the noise calibration data that we acquiring during the pre-scan to remove the noise and ringing, and thus it delivers a sharper and clearer image. And this is the example of the patient with hypertrophy cardiomyopathy with fibrosis. So by applying the Ericon DL with DL strength high, now you can appreciate that the signal to noise ratio is significantly improved compared to the previous scan that suffered a lack of the signal. And so it's impressive to achieve the higher resolutions to visualize your fibrosis. Ericon DL is very helpful and uh, when we are scanning a large patient, as uh, for example, in this case, he is the 140 kilogram patients. The challenge, the challenge that we are scanning is the routine scan image quality on a large patient that suffer a lack of the signal and cause a noisy image. So with Ericon DL, it enables us to reserve the good signal and thus obtaining the high resolutions for example, in this first fast perfusion, you can appreciate clearly since the perfusion's defect on the inferior aspect. And same thing also, you see the Ericon DL when we apply, even though on the free breathing sequence with the single source MBE, the image quality is as good as the conventional breath holding with two dimensional MBE fat set, even though it's acquired with the free breathing way. So air coil comes with a very flexible design. It fits all the patient's size, anatomy, and shape. And we have air anterior array coil, which come with a wider coverage. And we have air multipurpose coils, which have a large and medium. Using the air technology is very simple. The coil itself is not only light and very comfortable for the, for the patients. The workflow now is also much improved. So, we can have a simpler workflow to bring your patient get on the table. Just wrap the patients with this air coil around the chest 
Okay, so with this flexible design, the air coil is actually positioned closer to the chest, thus less movement and less breathing artifact will happen, and with more focus signal delivered to the region of interest on the chest. So compared to the rigid legacy coil, now the coil can be bring, can be, we can brought the, uh, bring the coil closer to the chest and deliver the focus signal. So the workflow is simply uh, is pretty simple. So with the air coil, air net technology, we only need to define the landmark with the single touch. We call it IntelliTouch. And the system will manage all the necessary, all the needs for the acquisition. We no longer have to pay attention to the coil selections or calibration, or in the past, we even forgot how to manage the coil correctly. So it makes our users so happy and we get a fantastic uh, feedback about air coil. We always seek the innovative technology and solutions to provide the best clinical performance and to meet the good image quality, especially on the critical sequence, such as in, on the myocardial delay enhancement. And here I would like to share you the solutions for myocardial delay enhancement challenges and how it can bring you the better contrast and image quality for MDE. I think the bigger challenge we are facing is to perform the multiple breath hold on myocardial delay enhancement, uh, especially on your sick, difficult patients who cannot comply the breath hold and cause the motions artifact and make the interpretations on the delay enhancement very difficult. So to overcome it, we can capture the single shot MDE, myocardial delay enhancement, with either single breath hold or free breathing to enable the concept of rapid snapshot imaging for motion reduction. And it's also good for arrhythmia patients. So with the single shot MDE acquiring with free breathing on this, in this case, so you can appreciate that the sub endocardial enhancement clearly seen in the septum and anterior wall. Concerning microvascular obstruction in patients with ischemia, ischemia cardiomyopathy, we understand that there is a need to differentiate between the blood pool signal and the sub endocardial enhancement. In the past, with the uh, conventional phase sensitive myocardial delay enhancement, it may make your uh, interpretation a little bit challenging to differentiate whether uh, the signal from the blood pool itself and the sub endocardial. So now we can acquire the dark blood phase sensitive MDE by applying the inversion set for suppressing the blood pool signal. And thus it improves the visualization of sub endocardial hyper enhancement. And it is pretty a good tool for you to uh, acquire it on your ischemic heart disease patient. And you may also consider to acquire the 3D my three dimensional myocardial delay enhancement which work for the rapid screening assessment of myocardial viability, especially uh, for your uncooperative patient. We can acquire the three dimensional MDE in either single breath hold or free breathing navigator technique. So we acquire the 3D heart, whole heart and we can acquire it into multiplanar views, views nowadays. Uh, like a such as in a short assist, in a two chamber and LVOT in a one acquisition. And we extend the air recon DL onto the 3D MDE and thus it enable you to get a better image quality and a good resolution to visualize the impaction on this case. Uh, we also understand that the MR conditional implants are increasingly common now. And also, we also understand that we have the challenge to scan the cardiac on a three Tesla system and the those uh, area who which is nearby the implant or those area that have been uh, affected by the magnetic field in homogeneity. So to overcome it, like in this case, to overcome it, we can acquire it with the mouth, my MDE plus. So how it works. So MDE plus is the adiposal inversions fat suppression technique with the radio frequency inversion, inversion preparation pulse become with a wider band wave applied to help you to uh, improve the tissue nulling in the delay enhancement where routine swimming often fail in this case. For example, inaccurate inversions may be mistaken for infarction in this case, but in fact, it is not an infarction from the MDE plus with adiabatic fat suppression. And same also, you can apply the 
technology of 3D MDE with a wide band adiabatic immersion on your pericarditis case. For you to differentiate really about the high, real hyper enhanced pericardium, in this case, if without the fat separation, it may make your interpretation a little bit challenging, whether this is a fat set failure or this is a real hyper enhanced pericardium. And in this case, when after we apply the 2D or 3D MDE, we can appreciate the real hyper enhancement pericardium which suggests pericarditis. And we further uh, have the motions, corrections, MOCO technology uh, applied into our perfusion study time cost. So it is an image registration algorithm to help us to compensate the misalignment by the respiratory motion and residual cardiac function. So you can see the significant improvement of the perfusion study image quality with motion correction. Beyond that, we also extend the air recon DL to the perfusion time cost motion correction to further achieve the good temporal resolutions of the perfusion dynamic study here. This is the case study of a 50, 53 years old female post -demi. She came with a symptom of the dyspnea and she had the LV dysfunction with a large impactions on the LAD and a first diagonal stenosis uh, suggesting microvascular obstruction. So here we utilize the power of air recon DL to our delay enhancement acquisition in this case, you can appreciate better resolution and signal to visualize the scar fibrosis, which is indicated by the yellow arrow, and the microvascular obstructions indicated by the green arrow here. And same thing, we apply the Ericon DL onto the perfusion study. It further enhances the qualitative visualizations to see the perfusion defect. In this case, you see the clear perfusion defect on the inferior sector and a little bit on the anterior sector here. So I introduced a new thing about myocardial strain deformations. So over the years, we know CMR has emerged as a reference standard for the evaluation of the biventricular morphology and function. However, the changes in ejection fractions may occur in the late stages of the majority of the cardiac disease. And being a measure of the global function, it has a limited sensitivity for identifying the regional myocardial impairment. So by acquiring the myocardial strain deformation, it can now allow us to measure the degree of deformations of the myocardial segment from its initial length, usually in the end diastolic, to its maximum length, usually in the end systolic, and is expressed by percentage. The different directions will generate the longitudinal, the radial, and circumferential strength of the myocardium. Longitudinal strengths uh, represent the longitudinal shortening from the base to the apex of the LV cavity and is expressed by the negative value. Radial strength is the radially directed uh, myocardial deformation towards the center of the LV cavity and it indicates the LV thickening and thinning motions during the cardiac cycle. It is expressed by the positive value. Meanwhile, circumferential strength derived from the myocardial fiber shortening along the circular perimeter observes on the short axis view, and it is consequently represented by the negative value. So what are the added value by you doing the myocardial strength imaging? You can do it for your non-ischemic heart disease and ischemic heart disease. In this example, this, uh, she is a dilated cardiomyopathy patient. We understand that as a mid-wall fiber mostly contribute to the circumferential strength. So in the presence of a mid-wall fibrosis in dilated cardiomyopathy, it has shown to further impair, damage the circumferential strength also. So by analysis, the myocardial strength, it offer you the new insight into the disease mechanism. The intramural functional abnormality have been shown to extend beyond the presence of late gadolinium enhancement in patients with dilated cardiomyopathy or in hypertrophic cardiomyopathy. Meanwhile, you can apply it onto your uh, ischemic heart disease too. The circumferential strength um, is significantly damaged, impaired in the territory we supplied by the severe coronary artery disease. For your information, the impaired strength value will source the indicator that, that the patient may have the possibility to develop the recurrent myocardial infarction and may need for the revascularization. So the segmental analysis of the myocardial strength allow you to distinguish the area of the subedocardia from area of transmural infarction. Coronavirus is a worldwide public health 
emergency pandemic now. So concerning the cardiovascular presentation in the wake of the viral pandemic, there are some patients admitted to the hospital again with the new onset of the chest pain, shortness of breath. And study also have raised the concerns over the myocardial inflammations after recovery from coronavirus disease. Here we integrate the quantitative parameter mapping, T1 MOLI mapping, and in patients with myocarditis, native T1 and T2 are significantly elevated as a result of pathological process of myocardial inflammations and edema. The value of extracellular volume is also will increase with patients with acute myocarditis. And we apply the air recon DL on the early enhancement and delay enhancement sequence so that it helps you to enhance the visualization of the clot formations and the scar fibrosis. I think the diagnosis of myocarditis sometimes is clinically challenging because its clinical symptom is not, is not specific and is similar to those acute coronary syndrome with acute chest pain and uh, elevated serum troponin level. So the leg gap enhancement itself associated with the myocarditis is predominantly uh, subepicardia and mid or mid myocardial uh, uh, enhancement and uh, is localized mostly frequently to the lateral and inferior wall. However, late gap enhancement in myocarditis is often difficult to identify in some cases and it doesn't really will show up also sometimes. So in, so in this case, we can apply the T1 mapping and T2 mapping. It can be a helpful, useful, uh, non-invasive tool for you to diagnose the myocarditis. The T2 value in this case significantly increased, 90% increase focus as compared to the normal, so B53. So this patient saw the significantly increase of the T2 value. Meanwhile, for the T1 value, it showed the slight 7% increase from the native T1. So T1, T2 mapping are useful for you to diagnose and manage your cardiomyopathy patient. And it is, it's a useful tool for you to detect the subclinical myocardial changes for the follow-up assessment tool. So enhancing the cardio mapping uh, by the, the quantitative tool like cardio map, cardio map, it will help you to follow up with the patient journey of non-ischemic cardiomyopathy. In this example, after the three months follow-up patient with viral myocarditis, now all the mapping value have almost recovered to the normal value. So parametric mapping, T1 mapping, T2 mapping, extracellular volume and T2 star. It's an emerging topic nowadays with the potential to be a powerful tool in the, in the identifications and quantifications of the diffuse cardiomyopathy disease. Native T1 means pre-contrast T1 can help you to demonstrate the intrinsic myocardium component quantitatively and can help you to estimate the myocardial interstitial remodeling and extracellular space expansion. So in such way, T1 mapping is a useful way to help you to detect any kind of myocardial fibrosis while overcoming the limitation of leg gap enhancement. For example, Fabry disease. The underlying pathology is an intracellular accumulation of phycophringal lipid. The native T1 in Fabry disease will show the decreased T1. Meanwhile, for amyloidosis, myocarditis, and diffuse fibrosis, will show you the increased T1 value. With T1 mapping post-contrast, it permits us to measure the extracellular volume, which can quantify the interstitial component. The interstitial component is a complex 3D extracellular space in which the cellular component of the myocardial embedded and in this space comprised of the free collagen, elastin, fibrin, and glycoprotein. So the ECV can be a potential useful parameter for you to enable the direct measurements of the extracellular component burden and can serve as an early marker for diagnosis. For quantitative T2 mapping, it's useful for detection of the myocardial edema and assess the water accumulation. T2 star is basically used to quantify the iron overload in the myocardial and liver, which can be caused by the repeated liver uh, blood transfusion or anemia patient or thalassemia patient. This is the case uh, of the amyloidosis. Amyloidosis commonly infiltrate myocardium. Early recognitions and uh, therapy are critical in amyloidosis when cardiac involvement is detected. So CMR related enhancement has been shown 
to be a very valuable tool in case of typical subendocardial pattern enhancement. Transmural enhancement can happen too in amyloidosis, but it came at the late stage. However, the characteristic of late enhancement, it can appear very late uh, in the disease course and do not always occur. And we also have a challenge to narrow the correct TI, the inversion time correctly. With the frustrating inversion time, which is quite common in the late enhancement imaging. So to overcome it, you can additional to scan with the T1 mapping, which can be a useful method to diagnose the cardiac amyloidosis. The marked increase of the T1 value as compared to the monomer is significantly increased T1 value with the ECV as uh, extracellular volume increase in this case. There are the features of the cardiac amyloidosis. In amyloidosis, extracellular volume can be your potentially useful parameter that help you to direct measures the amyloid burden and serve as an early marker for your diagnosis, progress, and disease monitoring. Meanwhile, for amyloidosis, uh, T2 doesn't really will show you the achieving significant change with amyloidosis. So uh, this is a case study of a 27 years old male at least without a particular uh, clinical history. He just came with the symptom with dyspnea and palpitation. Over the years, we know that cardiac MR imaging is a useful tool to evaluate the myocardial morphology. The disease itself is diagnosed morphologically first and define the presence of hypertrophic cardiomyopathy by measuring the myocardium thickness on the septum on the anterior lateral valve. You saw the significant uh, myocardium thickness. So what, what is the added value then we can bring you uh, by acquiring the T1 native in, cardio, uh, in hypertrophic cardiomyopathy? So in patients with hypertrophic cardiomyopathy, T1 mapping is useful, is useful for detecting the myocardial fibrosis while overcoming the limitation of late gadolinium enhancement. Native T1 native means pre-contrast can help you to depict the presence and the pattern of myocardial fibrosis even in the fibrotic area that go undetected by the late gate enhancement. In addition, native T1 have been found to correlate with the disease severity and increase along with the increase of the wall thickness in hypertrophic cardiomyopathy. So you can see in this case, it shows the focal increment of the T1 value, which is about uh, more than 50% increase of T1 value, is focal. For post-contrast T1, you can get extracellular volume fraction, which have been correlated well with the diastolic dysfunction. So T1 post-contrast will show the uh, significantly low in patients with hypertrophic cardiomyopathy because of the diffuse interstitial fibrosis. In patients with hypertrophic cardiomyopathy, the ECV value have also been co uh, correlated uh, well with the collagen volume fraction. So in, for the ECV value uh, on the patient with hypertrophic cardiomyopathy, it will show the sin uh, significant ECV value. That we measure here is expressed by percentage Normal value 25, the focal process here shows the increase of the ECV value. So CMR is always a good tool to help you to follow up with the patient the morphologically way by, by, by scanning the Fiesta Cine. And the late gap enhancement is a valuable tool to follow up with the cardiomyopathy phase. While added value from the T1 mapping and extracellular volume now can help you to stratify the risk of cardiac event. And Subsequently, uh, the three, uh, the T1 mapping, ECV, and um, late gate enhancement, all three four confirm the patient have the focal fibrosis. So we have a comprehensive uh, protocol and sequences to help you to diagnose the day-to-day -day uh, cardiomyopathy disease. And introduce you uh, about the power of 4D flow. 4D flow, we also will help you to acquire a whole heart functional exam in a free reading acquisition by using the highly accelerated acquisition that use technology, hypercut to reconstruct from the routine clinical scanning to complex anatomy. So you can utilize for the flow for your patient who, who have the power disease, shunting analysis, aortic disease, congenital heart disease. This case, he is a 68 years old Malaysian presented with progressive son of breath and fatigue. The pulmonary stenosis is evident with the elevated peak systolic velocity along with the aortic insufficiency, and you can see the aortic regurgitation. 
And furthermore, you can apply the 4D flow on your congenital cardiac, uh, congenital heart disease, pediatric cardiac imaging. This baby, this, uh, con, uh, this baby is a, uh, uh, he, he was diagnosed, diagnosed with tau sitting anomaly. So the aortic root arises from the right and the pulmonary trunk from the left. And thus you can quantify the aorta flow and pulmonary flow directly, plan it reconstructedly during the post-processing. So you can quantify, you can straight away get the QTQS and the volume that we get, the total volume, peak velocity, how much are the regurgitation. So good for your visualization and good for your quantitative result too. And the other case, 11 months old boy with hypoplastic left heart syndrome. So here we do the 3D heart free breathing and you can see the left ventricular outflow tract. And this technique, we use the navigator and through the whole thorax here. So you can see that uh, we can acquire it in an easy way for you guys. So the, the morphology can be assessed well by using the 3D heart. So you can see this, uh, this, this patient have done the pulmonary artery bending, okay, pulmonary artery bending. So you can appreciate the anatomy so well and the RVOT actually is connected with IOTA in this case. And further, we also uh, did the 4D flow on this baby and uh, with the hypoplastic left heart syndrome. So you can see now it really helpful for you to identify the anatomy so well and then the radio, uh, the technologists no longer need to spend so much of time to find out the vessel to be planning on from the 2D phase contrast sequence and it save the time and it's more flexible and it give you a good value from 4D flow. And the other uh, uh, patients with the mitral valve disease, this patient have the mitral bioprosthesis which has become stenotic as seen from the echo and then refer to cardiac MR. The 4D flow shows the accelerated flow in the mitral valve and 4D flow here additionally shows the severe mitral regurgitation which is not reported from echo. So uh, I encourage you guys to discover more about our latest development in cardiac MR by searching our Signal Pulse magazine, looking for more advancement in CDV works for cardiac MR. So our air technology will bring you a, a clinical versatility and comfort, our intelligent productivity that help you to improve and consistently bring you a superior image. This is our, our MR experience that simply make your life easier and better now. So thank you very much. Thank you, Jessica. Thank you. Thank you, Jessica. And thank you, Alberto, for the wonderful presentation and really exciting that uh, we have so many things going on in the cardiac world. Um, and this, I think um, the, the attendees are just as excited because as the presentation goes, goes by, they have raised a, a lot of questions. Um, so I think to not keep them waiting and uh, they're eagerly um, waiting for answers. So maybe we can start off with a question on a CT. Um, Alberto, uh, maybe you can take this one and help us out on this. So um, one of the attendees is asking under um, the smart arrhythmia um, feature that you have presented, um, can a patient with a, a, a high heart rate or, or, or a fast heart, heartbeat um, undergo CT coronary angiogram without, the administ without administering of beta blockers to slow the heart rate down? Stop. Yes, uh, we can consider revolution CT and of course revolution apex uh, heart rate independent. Smart arrhythmia will uh, take off all the problems that you have with irregular heart rates. But uh, we know perfectly that if there are no contraindication, the use of beta blocks, beta blockers will will low the heart rate in order to have a more stable and low heart rate is possible, of course, and with a low heart rate, we can achieve a shortest window of acquisition lowering the dose. Okay, um, hope we can uh, we have answered your question. But if not, please uh, feel free to add on to your question. I think the second question, also from the same participant, is asking if a patient undergoes, um, you know, a 64 slice multi multi slice CT um, type of um, angiogram study um, and has the 
finding of a 30 to 40 percent stenosis um, over the, the, the middle left um, artery, uh, LAD. Um, if he goes for a PTCA in cath lab, will he get the exact same result? Wow, this is... <laughs> Yeah, this, I just this, say, thank this you for the question. It's a very, very tricky question. Yes, yes. <laughs> there are, of course, correlations, but if your cardiac acquisition with 64 multiplicity is done without motion artifacts, so or with a low heart rate or with snapshot freeze, if the heart rate is not lower and this irregular, then consider also when you measure the stenosis. Uh, or in a manual mode or with uh, vessel analysis automatic mode, please be careful if around the stenosis area are there, there are plaques and especially calcified plaques because blooming artifact may impact the evaluation of the lumen. So be careful uh, on these things. That's, I, I think you, you handled the question perfectly. Hopefully, um, you know, um, this participant also give us some insights whether he agrees, disagree, or he has further inputs. Um, so there, there are few, a uh, few things that you have raised. I think um, th these are good, good points um, to take note. Whether there's artifact and 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 plugs also would have effect. Okay. Um. Maybe now we'll hand over the time to um Jessica. Jessica, there's a question on MR. So um with regard is um. Is the air recon DL um, or, or the, the, the feature that, that you have presented? Um, okay, maybe uh, be before I, I go into the question, just wanted to clarify to all participants over here. Um, for MR-wise, um, there is two features um, that um, is under our umbrella of portfolio um, uh, features in all our MR fleet, which is air recon and then air recon DL, DL meaning uh, short for deep learning. So these are two separate features. Um, uh, one is, um, you know, AI deep learning based, and then um, the other one, um, air recon is uh, the usual um, background, um, darkening of background that um, reconstruction technique that you have probably seen um, with many vendors as well. And then um, air recon, that's our version of uh, reconstruction technique. So, okay, this attendee, I, I will assume that um, uh, the air recon um, that he has been asking or he or she is asking is the deep. That's why we have presented. Air recon DL, um, does it improve um, motion artifact as well? Um, and then uh, what, what does it, what about the effects on noise and resolution? Maybe you can take that. Yeah. So air recon DL is basically like we thought, uh, like we discussed just now, is a image reconstruction algorithm that use the deep learning. So it used the uh, when we do the calibrations in the beginning of the scan, so we acquire the noise calibration first, and thus it remove the uh, noise and the ringing. However, air recon DL cannot help us to eliminate the breathing artifact and the motion artifact. So it's basically to help us to improve the image quality and uh, so by 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 apply by applying the air recon DL, so you see we can remove the, the image noise significantly. So that's why we have an abundance of the signal. So that's why we need to we can save the scanning time by reducing the we call the next or signal averaging. Then it can ensure the it can ensure us to reserve the good signal, even though like uh, on the on your very large patients or or uh, any kind of the sequence that usually that suffer from a very bad signal. So basically, it's, it, but it can't help us to, to eliminate the breathing artifact or so on. So you, if you consider that what kind of sequence that help, can help us to overcome the breathing artifact that appear on your image, then we can have another sequences that can comply with the uh, patient conditions. What about resolution? What's your take? Um, do you think, uh, you know, besides, you know, removing the noise, what, what is your take on Ericon DL, um, the deep learning based one, um, and impact on impacting on resolution? So you see, we have the good signal now by applying the Ericon DL. So when we have the good signal, means that we can push up the higher resolutions on the image. They are, 
the penalty of the scan time. Right. Yeah. So the metric we can set it higher so that it can uh, enhance the visualizations of the fibrosis on the delay enhancement or on the perfusion study. Because we have good signal brought from air coil itself with the higher channel and a more flexible coil design that bring the coil focus directly to the in area of interest. That's why we can ensure the good signal reservations like that. So that's why we can push up the higher resolutions for the scan. Yeah. Great. Thank you, Jessica, so much for the explanation. Um, I think I think that's uh, why we have always been sharing um, even yesterday's session and um, yesterday's session on broad-based um, uh, air technology, um, uh, deep learning uh, image reconstruction techniques. And then um, today we are repeating that as well, but specific to cardiac. Um, we have seen that, you know, our deep learning base is not just denoising, denoising uh, where, where you darken the background. That's, that's what every vendor has. But once you go into the deep learning space um, of image reconstruction technique, that's where, you know, you can experience um, absolutely no trick off. You can have a lower scan time, removing your noise and also pushing up your resolution. And that's, that's the dream of uh, whether it's a CT reconstruction technique or an MR reconstruction technique, that uh, has always been the dream. And, and we have um, finally the answer uh, brought to you um, with Ericon DL and True Fidelity in CT. Okay, um, if there, is there any um, other further questions or comments from um, the, um, the people who has um, put in their questions, whether you know, we have answered your question or you have further comments um, from, from the speakers, do let us know. Give it a couple of minutes. Okay, so oh, I, I've seen a few chats over here. Maybe um, they didn't use the, the, the Q&A function, but um, using the chat. Okay, so uh, okay, a, a few of um, the customers um, is um, just giving praise to the speakers uh, for the great session. Um, Okay, and then uh, I think one of them from Indonesia is also saying that, you know, um, they are in um, the cardiac cath lab and as well as uh, the imaging center. It's good to know that. Thank you so much for all your feedback. Uh, okay, um, if there's no further questions, then uh, we will um, pass the time over back um, to, um, to you guys. Um, we, but before that, we love to, um, we hope that you have enjoyed um, this webinar session brought to you. This will conclude the end of um, the Intelligently Efficient Week um, that GE Healthcare has um, put forth to you. Uh, we hope that we have ended the, the, the sessions and the week long learning at a sweet note. There will be a replay in the evening, so feel free, if you have missed the session, uh, the live session in the afternoon, uh, feel free to go back and um, re-watch um, the, um, the recording of this um, session uh, in the evening. So for more um, on-demand and educational mini clips and new information on what's new, please visit our innovation.gehealthcare.com where um, we have rolled out all the new and latest um, features um, from the last RSNA 2020, uh, which happened about uh, one to two months ago um, back in Chicago. So all the information are there and they're easy to digest. So uh, remember again, it's innovation.gehealthcare.com. Simple as that, three words, innovation, GE Healthcare, um, put together, GE Healthcare is a single word, .com. And then you can find all um, the very valuable information and um, short clips that is really easy and um, user-friendly website. Okay, I think, oh, there are more questions. Do you um, take uh, one last one last question, maybe 
Um, to Jessica, are you do you still have time, Jessica? Is it okay yes, to take this last question? I like question? to share more more insight. Okay, great. <laughs> yeah, we we'll, we'll, we don't like to disappoint um the attendees, especially when they have taken a whole hour with us. So okay, this question um is. Is MR um, also a valuable tool to evaluate coronary artery disease, CAD? What's your take? I mean, personally, honestly, I still think that CT scan will be a good uh, the gold standard for coronary artery disease. So MR coronary... Uh, please, please, uh, to MRI, leave us. <laughs> Because if you, if you if you can if you can evaluate also coronary artery disease, uh, we finish. <laughs> so we no, yeah, of course, of course, uh, yeah, yeah. So the most that you can appreciate from the MR coronary itself, I think. I, I know. I think it's a question. It's a question of uh, of spatial resolution. Uh, so yeah, you, I would just suggest that uh, if you have the patients that you want to assess the origin of the coronary artery. The right coronary artery and the left coronary artery, which you we know that some patients came with the we call the anomaly coronary artery origins, the abnormal origins. So in this way, if uh, you will, the the doctor have the concerns to inject the contrast, so you may just refer the patients for the in the sequence we call the three D heart. So it's it's a good view for you to see uh, only on the proximal aspect, I think. So for you to assess the, cor uh, the coronary artery origin. Meanwhile, if you ask me that if you want to uh, make the diagnosis of the coronary artery disease from MR coronary, I don't really suggest it because still CT coronary is a good thing, a good tool for us. Yeah. Maybe Alberto, you can chime in here. I know you're very passionate about this from a CT point of view. Of course, yes, yes, yes. <laughs> And as uh, I show, maybe today uh, the issue that we can have is the spatial resolution because uh, vendors uh, have uh, maximum 0 0.5 uh, slice thickness minimum. And the promising technique uh, will be photon counting. With photon counting, we hope uh, to remove all these issues, especially blooming artifact and especially intrastent evaluation that are crucial and critical for the correct stenosis evaluation and other pathologies, of course. Yes, I totally agree. <laughs> Oh, sorry, I was on mute. Um, thank you so much um, for the great discussion and the great questions coming from the attendees that makes it so controversial, not really controversial, but um, has invoked a lot of, um, you know, insights from the speaker and, and a lot of, um, you know, our, our most objective um, answers, I, I believe, because uh, even though Jessica comes from MR, she, she uh, I, I think the, the, um, it's, it's, it's clinically, um, um, the right, uh, the 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 clear the clear thing to 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 do and um, an obvious thing to do to say that um, you know for coronary coronary artery disease is still a, a CT game altogether uh, where CT brings a lot more value um, um, as opposed to MR. But but nevertheless, I think um, there there are other things that MR plays a critical role um, in in terms of uh, cardiac MR uh, cardiac imaging. Okay, I will leave um, uh, the last two minutes um, back to you guys. Um, so I just like to say a, a really a big thank you uh, for the remaining participants who are still with us. Uh, we hope to give. Uh, we hope that you had a great experience and a, uh, have a good day ahead. Um, thank you again to Alberto and Jessica for taking our time. Thank you. Pleasure. Thank you. Thank you. Bye bye. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Bye.